So this week has been absolutely insane for AI news. We've got OpenAI dropping their most powerful model yet, a completely new browser that puts AI at the center, and some major breakthroughs that are going to change everything. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button because this stuff is moving fast and you don't want to miss any of it. Let's start with the biggest story. OpenAI just released O3 Pro and this thing is a monster. This isn't just another incremental update. O3 Pro is essentially the souped up version of their O3 reasoning model and the benchmarks are absolutely wild. On the AIM 2024 mathematics competition, it's scoring 93% which puts it ahead of Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro and Anthropic's Claude 4 Opus. But here's the crazy part. This model actually thinks step-by-step -step through problems, enabling it to perform reliably in domains like physics, math, and coding. It's available for ChatGPT Pro users right now replacing the O1 Pro model. The pricing is $20 per million input tokens and $80 per million dollar output tokens, which honestly isn't cheap. But when you see what this thing can do, it's pretty incredible. Every year, my father hosts a family alfresco feast cooked by the children. Branzino. Yep. Tomatoes for Branzino. Yep. Cucumbers. Yep. That's a zucchini, I think. That's OK. We can just ask chat. Now, while OpenAI was making headlines, the browser company just dropped something that could completely change how we interact with the internet. They've launched Dia, their AI-first browser. And this is fascinating because it's not just a browser with AI features bolted on. AI is literally at the heart of everything. The URL bar doubles as an AI chatbot interface. You can ask it to summarize files, search the web, and even chat with all your open tabs. It's based on Chromium, so it feels familiar, but the AI integration is seamless. You can customize the AI's tone, writing style, and coding preferences just by talking to it. This feels like the future of browsing, especially when you consider how much of our work happens in browsers these days. But the biggest news from Europe is Mistral's launch of Magistral, their first reasoning model. This is huge because it comes in two variants. Magistral Small, with 24 billion parameters, that's completely open source, under Apache 2.0 and Magistral Medium, which is their enterprise version. What makes Magistral special is its multilingual reasoning capabilities. Unlike other models that struggle with non-English reasoning, Magistral maintains high-fidelity logical thinking across languages like English, French, Spanish, German, Italian, Arabic, Russian, and Chinese. On AIM 2024, Magistral Medium scored 73.6%, and with majority voting, it hit 90%. That's competitive with the best models out there. Now. Here's something that caught everyone off guard. Manus AI just made their chat mode completely free and unlimited. This is crazy generous in an industry where everyone's charging for everything. Manus chat mode gives you instant answers powered by Gemini models. And if you need more power, you can seamlessly upgrade to their agent mode. What's brilliant about this strategy is that you can clarify your project requirements in the free chat mode before committing to the more powerful agent features. It's like having a conversation to figure out exactly what you need before spending credits. And finally, Topaz Labs just announced Astra, which they're calling the first ever creative upscaler specifically designed for video. This isn't just another upscaler. It's built specifically for AI-generated videos, upscaling them to crisp 4K resolution while enhancing quality and fine details using their Starlight technology. For content creators working with AI video generation, this could be a game changer. Most AI video tools output at lower resolutions, and having a specialized tool that understands the unique characteristics of AI-generated content could really elevate the final product quality. Make sure you're subscribed because next week, I'll be diving deep into testing these tools and showing you exactly how they perform in real-world scenarios. What are your thoughts on these releases? Drop them in the comments below.